I'm sure each and every one of you guys already know about RL Craft, the only mod pack in Minecraft where you can get one shot by skeletons. Bruh. There are tons of new mobs and dragons, and trust me, you will die a lot in this mod pack. Today, I'm gonna be taking on RL Craft in hardcore mode. You guys heard that right, hardcore. If I die once, the whole world is gonna be deleted. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to my channel and you like my content, consider subscribing to help us reach that 50k goal. Alright, enough chit chat, let's get started right away. Alright, so the story begins on day one. I was just collecting some rocks. I didn't know what to do with them. I just saw them on the ground and they looked kind of cool. Oh, and this baby zombie was on this chicken and he was chasing me, so that was a bit close. I was already thirsty and hungry and I've already taken hearts. Like, this is not that good of a start. I soon found some gravel and I needed to make some flint tools out of it. I'm pretty sure it's the first thing I need to do inside this mod pack. Next up, I had to crack my flint on this stone right here, which gave me flint shards and now I can use that to make some tools. And for the rest of the day, pretty much chopping down some trees, gotta get some wood. We need to start getting some better tools and armor fast. I'm actually pretty lucky because I didn't spawn near any big mobs and dragons and all that kind of stuff. For the rest of the night, I'm gonna play it super safe and just dig myself down inside of this hole. And on day two, I had all of these logs, but I didn't know how to turn them into planks. Like, I was kind of confused. It wasn't letting me craft them. So I actually had to look this up, but pretty much I have to place that lock down and then take my hatchet and then right click it. And that is how you get planks. Like, it's just so much extra work. Just makes everything harder. Later that day, I gathered a lot more basic materials like string and wood. On day 3, I started to realize that food was going to be a problem. I had like no food and the only people around me were these turkeys. And these turkey legs were terrible. They literally gave me like half a food bar for each turkey leg. And I had no way to cook it too, which makes it even worse. Oh, and I also spotted a small battle tower here. I'm gonna get some dirt and try to pillar my way up to the top. And when I got to the top, there were some alright things in the chest, some leather boots and this stone halberd. Oh, and I was getting hit by this baby zombie. I wonder if he like kind of just jumped off. That was a that was scary. Yeah, and later that night I found some planes with some cows. They were running around crazily. But hopefully this should be a bit of a better food source for us. On the next day, I found this tiny little house. I think I'm gonna keep my stuff down here for now. This looks like a nice little house for us to just chill at. Oh, it also took me ages to figure out why my torches weren't lighting up. It was just so confusing and frustrating. And apparently these things can go out after a certain amount of time too, which means I have to keep on lighting them back up. And now we had a furnace and we were able to cook up the steak from the cows that I killed earlier. So now it looks like food should be a bit easier to handle. And everything was looking good except that thing over there, that flying thing. That kind of worried me. I'm running back inside. Gotta be safe, you know. That dinosaur over there too, like these guys are roaming everywhere. I went out to kill some more cows because I was trying to gather some leather, and for some reason it was super hot outside, like I had to return to this pond every 20 seconds or so, just so I could cool down and get some drinks. Oh, and that house in the distance over there, I already checked it out, and there's literally nothing there, it was just empty. See, this is what I'm talking about, I'm already burning again, I gotta go back into my pond. This is crazy, dude. So I used that leather and I made some leggings and a cap, so this should provide us with a bit more protection than what we already have. Oh, and I discovered this skill tab, and I'm not sure, like, what I actually get from it, but I'm just gonna put some stuff into attack and defense because those two things seem pretty important to me. Oh, and don't make the same mistake I do. This is, like, the only time I've actually gotten this far. But I completely forgot that you cannot see coordinates in RL Craft, so I just lost my whole base. Like, I had all my wood, I got all my stuff in there. That That's what made me the most mad. At least I got this new crafting table, though. But yeah, just don't make the same mistake as me. I'm just super mad that I lost, like, my iron, my sticks, my wood. Like, that stuff I grinded for, dude. I was able to get a bed down the night, and I was in the desert. There were a lot of these creepy dudes around me, and those guys are dangerous, as I've died to them before, a lot. But I saw this big old city here in the desert and I want to go explore it. This thing looks like it may have some good loot. There was a zombie behind this door and I killed him. He was really low actually. And I killed my very first monster. And that was a pretty cool achievement to get. There was some food inside these chests here. Not much, but it's still a good amount. Oh, and these blue guys, I originally thought they were going to be bad. They're called Aegises. And when I went near one, it actually unlocked something inside my bestiary. And it says, Law Enforcing Order Elementals. Aegis has been known to enforce the law around villages. Even petty thieves will be mercilessly pursued, so those guys are good, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, this place, I'm gonna explore more of this building. There's a lot of villagers around. This place could actually be a nice home for me, though. It's pretty big, and I got protection by these blue guys. I started breaking these random stairs that were in the main room. I don't know why they were even here, but I'm gonna turn this room into my bedroom slash my base kind of room. I'll have some chests and all that kind of stuff set up here. The next day, I went out and pretty much cleared out the rest of the compound, searched every corner an inch of it. I got tons of food though, so we were chilling. Yeah, and I just spent a majority of that day trying to get back to where we were before. Getting some more sticks, string, and some wood. We need to get a little bit of our progress back at least. Okay, so I just thought about this, and we are kind of in the middle of the desert. There's not much grass around us at all. There's tons of bad people in the desert. 
I don't know if this is such a great place to stay. I might have to move out again. We just gotta be constantly on the go until we find a place that is somewhat livable. And on day 9, I packed up everything and it was time to head off. I said goodbye to the villagers. This was a nice place to be. Loved meeting you guys, but it was time to leave. Oh, and I saw one of these red flowers, and these things looked oddly familiar to me. Like, I've seen them before. Like, I feel like I've watched a video of some dude clicking on it, and then he just died. Like, I'm gonna- I wanna stay away from that thing. I do not wanna take any risks right now. I'm pretty far already. Oh, okay, that thing looks a bit scary. Well, anyway, I found ourselves another little house here, and inside the chest, we got an iron helmet. Wow, this- this is actually pretty good. But it says requirements to defense 8. So, am I not allowed to wear it? Let's see what happens when I try putting it on. Oh yeah, it says I don't meet the requirements. Okay, so I, I think I kind of get what this stuff means now. I gotta level up my defense now. I really want to wear this thing. Oh, and these green guys, apparently they don't hurt you. I got close to one and they didn't seem to like care about me or anything. So I think we're fine here. I want to find a place that has water, trees, grass, and it's just overall pretty safe that I can settle down in. And on day 10, I think I found exactly what I was looking for. There was this big old building in the distance, and it turns out to be a windmill. And there was a massive farm next to it, and there were these Aegis things here. So that means this had to be a village. But yeah, this farm was massive. There was so much wheat here. I think this might be where I have to settle down. There were some trees around too. There was some water. It looked pretty nice. Oh, and this chest had 15 gold ingots. That That's crazy. I don't know what I'm gonna do with gold, but that has to be somewhat valuable. We got a lot of iron too. That chest was just amazing. Oh, and we got some plasters, bandages, some things we can heal ourselves with, and iron boots. But my inventory is full right now. I think this is a great place to settle down. By day 11, I have everything settled down. I got some furnaces up here. I got crafting tables. I got chests. Everything is looking great. I even crafted myself some torches because I think it might be time to go down in the mines, maybe mine a little bit. I'm not really sure what to do next. So if you guys know how to play this mod pack, some help would be greatly appreciated in the comments below. Help your boy out because I'm, I'm kind of a noob to this kind of stuff. But yeah, I just figured, you know what, let's go mining. Like, that's that's what a normal Minecrafter would do, right? But I quickly realized that I was wrong. I came across this mound of ores on the ground. I kept in mind not to go too far, and I gotta remember where I came from. I'm not trying to get lost again. But I, I, like, I can't even mine this stuff, because I'm not mining level 4 or whatever. But skills are really important, because I can't really do much without it. I think I'm gonna need to go study a bit. I gotta learn at least a little bit on how this mod pack works, because I'm clueless. So, I watched this video by Lord Angram, and it actually helped me out a lot, so thank you for that. But pretty much he suggested that I do not spend any XP on skills until I reach level 5 so I can get an advancement. Which makes me get XP faster I think, so we're gonna do that first. And that night I got my stone halberd and I went to go kill some of these zombies. Pretty sure these guys can one shot you so I've gotta be really careful and stay back. Good thing my stone halberd actually does so much damage, I can kill these guys in just 3 shots this thing. That's pretty crazy. I'm just scared a zombie's gonna creep up behind me while I'm fighting other zombies though. My armor really isn't the greatest either right now. Oh, and I also saw this joust thing and I killed it. I think he was like a monster? So it was technically my first ever monster kill, and I got some raw joust meat. Pretty proud of myself for that one. And when we got home, I decided to do the combat thingy. So I think I should get some more XP when I fight mobs now, so that should make gathering XP a bit faster. Also, I have no idea what any of this stuff does, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. Maybe I'll figure it out later, but I'm just I'm just gonna leave that stuff. My brain already hurts from just thinking about all this. And for the next couple of days, I decided to get a bunch of XP, and I also crafted this tool belt, which of course I can't wear because I need agility level 4. Oh, and wait, what what is that? Okay, that looks like a really scary jellyfish thing. Why is he on the surface? Kinda creepy. I'm gonna go the other way. Oh, and I also made myself a cobblestone shield. I'm pretty sure these things are good. That dude in the video told me to make one, so here we go. And I've also been getting XP a lot faster than I originally thought. It's actually going by super fast. Also, I can finally wear my tool belt now, but it's kind of messed up on my HUD. I think it has something to do with how I scaled things. But like, it's kind of just sitting there in the middle of my screen and I don't like it. But yeah, here are my levels right now. I got level 8 defense and level 4 agility. Which means I can finally wear my iron armor. There we go, we got a little bit more armor. It should help us a bit, but my next goal is definitely to get full iron. Yeah, but this tool belt thingy, I can like put tools in it and then I can take them out whenever I want. It just saves a bit of inventory space. It's kind of cool. Also, I'm super sorry about the loud yelling in the background. I'm definitely cutting that down in editing. Like, I, I just don't like listening to those guys scream all day. It hurts my ears. Okay, also, I increased the scale of my HUD a bit. So I fixed that tool belt thing, so now it's actually aligned. But now everything just looks big, so it's kind of whack. Not sure if I like this or not. But right now, I'm trying to make myself an iron katana because I want a better weapon, like an upgraded weapon kind of. I think it's going to be a bit better. I had to make a handle, and then I turned that thing into my iron katana. Two attack speed and 4.5 damage. It's about the same, actually, as my stone halberd, but whatever. Well, I got quality worthless. Minus 10% like everything. Wait, this is trash. 
I can't even use it because it says requirements to tech. Oh, whoa, wait. Okay, there's a lot of these guys. I don't. Things are just randomly spawning my house, man. I, this worries me. But I can't even use this thing. I need attack level 8. On day 17, I saw some iron on this mound thing, and I was wondering if I could break it with my flint pickaxe, but it was taking a really long time. I'm just gonna sit here and let's see what happens. I am not even kidding. I'm literally not exaggerating when I say this took literally like a full minute, a full 60 seconds to break, dude. This was crazy. And of course, at the end, it never gave me anything, but I realized something right after this. I can make a stone pickaxe. Like, what am I thinking? Why am I still using flint tools? I have stone. Also, it was really hot in the desert, man. I had a cool down. Good thing I had a water bucket, and this seemed to work. Came back the next day with a stone pickaxe, and it worked like a charm. This stuff was breaking really easily. I want to get myself a full iron set, and then I'm going to try to get a summoning staff, and then maybe like a bow or something, just because long-range fights might be a bit safer. But yeah, everyone says a summoning staff is like the most important item in Arlcraft, so let's see about that. All I know is that you can summon your own like monsters or pets that will like fight for you. That sounds cool. Day 21, I spent grinding just everything, XP, ores, this place, this like huge ore mound, I've spent a lot of time here the past couple of days, this thing is just a lifesaver, I don't have to go down into the caves and waste a bunch of torches. This place has so much iron and so much coal in just a small confined space. Also, I fought some of these big boys over here, they surprisingly didn't like one tap me like I thought they would, hey one tap, my name is one tap. Alright, that, that was stupid, I'm sorry. But yeah, these guys weren't even doing that much damage to me. They were hitting me in the leg, I think, is what that thing in the bottom right says. Yeah, it was really hot though. I had to constantly place down water just to make myself colder. On day 22, I smelted some iron, and I made myself more iron armor so now I could get my full iron set. Let's go, our armor is looking pretty full. We should take a lot less damage now. Also, I wanted to make an iron halberd because our stone halberd is about to break and I really like this type of weapon. Like, you swing slowly but it does a lot of damage. And that is why I decided to make one. There we go, and we got quality thin. Minus 5% damage but plus 10 speed, I'll take it, that's not that bad. It's kind of just like a trade-off. Later that day, I ventured into some caves because I wanted to come across a guru. It was not spawning for some reason, I was in pitch blackness for like a long time but I did not see any text. A little bit later, I noticed this text in the bottom of my screen, and I kind of got scared. I was like, oh shoot, should I be holding out this torch or not? I'm not sure if this torch counts as a light source. So I put the torch away, and I just patiently waited. Since when did RL Craft become a horror game? I got scared, I heard those crawly thingies, and I pulled out my torch, but that was a mistake because it just went away. So I guess I'm not allowed to hold my torch out. I just have to sit here in pitch darkness. I waited a bit longer, but it never came back. I don't know why. While I was exploring in the darkness, I found one of these guys, a chupacabra. I think their meat is actually kind of good, but I just went to go and kill it. It was relatively easy because my shield could just block all the damage. I stood around and waited for a bit longer, but I could not find this guy. After a long time of waiting, this chat message finally popped up indicating that a Gru was going to spawn kind of soon. And later after that, we got this chat message. So it has to be coming soon, right? I was getting pretty anxious right now. I was kind of sitting in my corner just waiting. And when he didn't come for a good like 20 seconds, I decided to push out into the darkness. And that's when he just appeared out of nowhere, right on top of me. But good thing this shield is super effective, so I can just block his attacks. Only took two hearts of damage. And we got our ender pearl, that's what we came here for. When I returned home, I went to craft this summoning thing. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need magic levels to use it, because that's kind of like everything in this game. Yep, it says requirements, magic level 8. Looks like I'm gonna have to get a bit more XP before I can even use this thing. Once I had my XP, I pulled out my summoning staff, and I kind of started right-clicking around, and this green portal thing showed up, and there we go, my very own Aegis, Aegis, however you pronounce it, appeared. I'm not sure, like, do they do they help me? I, they should, right? I went into my beast theory to keep on, like, studying things, because I didn't know how this stuff worked 100%. Gonna have to Google some things up. But yeah, a Reaper looked kind of cool, I wanted to summon one of those guys. So I selected it, and I just held my button down for a bit longer to use more mana, and there we go, we have my own Reaper! For the next couple of days, I ventured down into the mines once again, but this time it was to try to search for some heart crystals. I want to fight a dragon, man. Like, I've been pretty lucky because I haven't found any dragons so far. But then again, I haven't really explored that much either. I want to fight a dragon, but maybe I need some more hearts first. So that's why I'm coming down here to try to find some heart crystals. There was also a lot of other ores here too, so that was pretty handy. Finally came across one. I don't know if I'm unlucky or if they're just rare, but these are really hard to find. And you also find them in pretty small portions. And I need nine of them just to get one more heart. I found a couple more, but this one did some weird stuff. When I walked up to mine it, this huge like thingy appeared. And I thought I was actually about to die here. It was shooting things really fast and my shield wasn't even equipped. 
but thankfully he didn't do that much damage, surprisingly. It was called a Vapula. I don't- I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm saying everything in this series wrong. Yeah, that almost gave me a heart attack. I actually thought I was gonna lose the world right there and then. When I got back to home base, I crafted up my heart container, and boom. There we go, we got an extra heart. That actually looks really cool. This should help us a bit, but I really want to go fight that dragon, man. Oh, and I also made a compass, because now I can see my coordinates, which means I shouldn't be getting lost anymore. I want to make this antique atlas as well. This is kind of like a map, I'm pretty sure. Well, now I can go out exploring however far I want, because I had the coordinates to my base. This, like, mage tower thing over here looks kind of cool. I'm gonna go check this thing out. This thing was super tall, but when I finally got to the very top, I there were so many chests. I thought I hit the gold mine, but there was absolutely nothing in any of these chests. Oh, and I want to get these bookshelves because I need books. But I didn't have a good enough gathering skill, so that's a rip. Ooh, a cake? I forgot about cakes, bro. That's pretty sick. I also explored around the village that was right next to the mage tower, and this random chest just had 39 pieces of wool, just randomly. And also, I took this skeleton head because, I don't know, I feel like it would look kind of cool inside her house. After some more traveling, I came across a dragon. I finally found one. I didn't know these guys were kind of rare. And yeah, I think that is where the dragon spawns, but I really want to fight him. I just don't think I'm ready yet. I still only have iron tools. I don't even have a bow either. I'll save the coordinates and then I can come back here later. On days 32 and 33, I went down into the mines and I'll tell you in a second. But first, I found this really weird glowing purple skeleton. He was moving around like crazy. He had a lot more health than a normal skeleton did. And I'm not sure if he does more damage or not because I just blocked everything with my shield. But yeah, I killed him relatively easily and he dropped me some pretty good stuff. I got heart crystals, I got a bow and a cap. The bow had unbreaking 3, arrow recovery 3, and multi shot 2. That's pretty good. But yeah, I'm down in the mines because I want to get into the nether. I researched a lot of baubles and stuff and I... I need a lot of nether themed items like magma cubes, blaze rods, all that kind of stuff. So I gotta find some obsidian. But of course, first we need to find diamonds to make a diamond pickaxe. And a little while later, I came across a diamond, but oh, this random guy right here, Calpod, came out of nowhere. Like, a lot of mobs just pop out of nowhere at you. He doesn't do that much damage though, so be good. We made the advancement diamonds. Now we can craft ourselves a diamond pickaxe to mine some obsidian with. I'm actually really curious to see what the nether looks like in RL Craft. And I also found a couple heart crystals on the way, so that's pretty helpful. When we get home, I might be able to make another heart container. On day 34, I finally returned home with a lot of goodies, a lot of random drops that I got from just mobs I was killing down in the caves. Most importantly though, we got ourselves a diamond pickaxe. We need a 16 level mining requirement. I didn't realize this, my levels were kind of crazy. I had 27 levels. I think it's just the coal and the mobs that I was farming off of that gave me tons of XP. Okay, I got off to end my recording session for the day and I came back on and then I saw this phosphorescent chupacabra like boss bar thing on the top. And I searched around for him, but I could not find him sadly. Might be a good thing though, because he would probably just like one shot me. So since I needed mining level 16 to use my diamond pickaxe, I spent a lot of this day just mining. I mined out to this big pillar place and I also went down into the caves. And so while I was down in the mines, I spotted some more diamonds. And uh, for some reason, this was just going through my head. I was thinking that I needed to get level 16 mining to mine diamonds, which was completely false. I could literally just mine them now. Okay, I don't even want to talk about it, man. My, my brain just wasn't working. But anyway, I kept on adventuring out and I found some poison glands. I have no idea what they do right now, but it, it looks like they could be kind of cool. On the way back to the diamonds, one of these specters appeared out of nowhere, and it was actually a close fight. That guy was really strong. As you can see, I went down to five hearts. I was almost like panicking, man, but now I came back and I realized how dumb I was that I can I can just get the diamonds. Also, I finally got my mining level to 16, so I was gonna grab some obsidian, but then I decided to go home just to be safe and heal. So then I returned home and I was just sorting all my inventory, cleaning things up, and smelting some of my ores. Also, I think it's probably a good time to go to bed now so I can get back to full health. On day 38, I went back down into the mines, and today was the day where I would grab my obsidian and head into the nether. I was excited. And when I finally constructed the nether portal underneath our base, I realized I forgot one crucial thing. The flint and steel. I don't know how I could forget that. Now we're back, and I finally have the flint and steel, we can go into the nether now. I honestly have no idea what to expect, I'm just hoping it's not too difficult to stay alive in there. Oh, we made the advancement? Ooh, I, I forgot about this old nether texture, dude. I actually really like this. Is that a uh, nether fortress over there? We have one right next to our- Oh, whoa, what is that? What is that thing? Oh my god. Oh my. I need to go back. I'm going back. I'm going back. Now, when I'm watching back this footage, I realized it was only doing me like half a heart of damage each time, so it wasn't really damaging that much, but I got really scared at the moment, so we're gonna try to go back there. 
I went back there and I made sure I was a bit safer. I gathered some glowstone and a bit of netherrack just in case I would ever need it. Honestly, the nether doesn't really look like it's that good of a use for us right now. I kind of wasted a lot of time getting like stuff for the nether. So that might have been a waste of time, my bad. I, I need to like learn more about this mod pack. But at least I got easy access to the nether whenever I'm gonna need it in the future. Because I'm sure I will. While I was exploring later that day, I came across a couple of emeralds just on the surface of like a surface level cave. It was really strange, but I, I'll take it I guess. I also found one of these things. There were so many sticks laying around. I had 50 sticks. I don't know why they were there. The chest was literally filled with food, so that's pretty cool. I have way too much food right now. Also, there was this cauldron thing in the center. It looked like a ritual of some sort. Not sure what these villagers are doing here, but that's kind of creepy. Also stole their ores. Okay, I'm back home on day 40, and I'm not really getting very far, so I'm gonna give myself a goal. We're gonna go out and explore and find ourselves a battle tower because people say the loot at the very top of the battle tower are, is usually like super good and super helpful in our craft. And right now we are not making much progress so I gotta do something. So I set on my trek outward and I came across one of these really big obsidian towers. It was not a battle tower though so I'm just gonna leave it alone. On day 41 though I did come across a battle tower but I was a bit confused because there was no boss at the top and it was also really low to the ground and the loot was absolutely trash at the top. And when I walked down there there was an ultra burning skeleton of bolting cloaking lifestyle storm slap of fear like what? What is this? I just ran away and good thing there was a nymph right next to me I didn't realize till a bit later but he was healing me that whole time so that was good for him. But yeah, that was literally the first floor and that was a bit scary. So I did some research and I realized that this was a battle tower where it's like opposite. So the best place is at the bottom and the worst thing is at the top. So we were gonna have to go down. I was gonna dig down and skip all of the trash levels. Hopefully we can get to some good loot here. Alright, I'm gonna break out of this right here. There should be a chest. Let me see if I can just snag some loot. Ooh, we got some diamonds. Uh, diamond stuff. Oh, something's hitting me. Ow, ow, ow. A cave spider. Okay, it's not doing that much damage. I think I should be fine. A healing salve though. What is this? Does this heal me? Oh, I just drank it all and it did not appear to heal me. That's a bit weird. Um, I feel like that battle tower won't work for me. So we're gonna go find another one and good thing I did on day 43. This one was an ascending type, so this one was easier for me to get into. Yeah, the ones that go up I feel like are just a bit easier to go and loot. Well, uh, when I got to the top, I kind of messed up this drowning technique that I saw on YouTube, so he was awoken. I tried to knock him off though, it was kind of scary because I wasn't sure if he was able to hit me or not. Eventually, he just fell off, so that was, I'll just take it, I guess. But I'm pretty sure the chest is now open for us to go grab. Gotta kill these mobs up here first. Once I got down to the chest, let's take a look at what's inside. Oh, whoa, a lot of cool stuff, an emerald ring, that's nice. Some diamonds, a magic mirror. We can go back to our spawn point. I don't have to walk back, dude. This place is really far. A lot of enchanting bottles. Holy. This chest is crazy, dude. We've got so much in here. Wait, I just realized I can't even use this magic mirror. It says I have to be level 69,420 in magic to be able to use this. Is this a joke? I think this is a joke because I'm pretty sure there's literally no way someone can be that high of a level. And later that night, I came across a village, but this one was just completely destroyed by a dragon that was flying above it. Like, look at those buildings, dude. Everything's just on fire and in ashes. I might go inside. I really need to find some leather. Good thing I actually went inside the village because there was a chest with a mending book inside of it. So that's pretty cool. I don't know what these other books are, but I'm taking that mending book. And that night, I crafted myself a little sleeping situation, and uh, we were in planes, and I noticed some cows in the distance. I need some leather to make myself a backpack. Ooh, there they are. Oh, hey, Crypt, what's going on? This guy is just walking up to me like this. Alright, well, once I got my leather, I came back and made myself a backpack. I don't know how to use these things, but this thing seems to be working well. I can actually store my stuff in it. That's great. And I have no idea how to pick this thing up. This is kind of whack. I did figure it out eventually, and I made myself to the second top floor, and I just grabbed everything as fast as I could, all the useful items. And I also did the exact same with the floor under me. There were some more diamond tools, and a couple golden apples, so this was really worth it. We had a lot of good loot now. It's finally time to tread back. It's actually hot though, I gotta, I'm gonna eat one of my golden apples right now, just cause I'm a bit low and I don't feel safe without all these hearts. Oh, home sweet home. I know it's been probably one second for you guys, but this was pretty boring, I had to walk all the way home. Being home hasn't felt any nicer. 
Okay, so I finally put everything back in our chests, and I really need to make a sorting system in here because things are getting pretty messy. I'm kind of just dumping things in random places. Well, anyway, yeah, you can see here we got all of our goodies. I just dumped everything that we got from that adventure inside of this chest, and I want to take this Aussie chest plate liner because apparently this can, like, make yourself warmer or cooler however you want to. It's self-adjusting. That's super nice. I want to put that on a diamond chest plate, actually, so we should craft that. Oh, wait, but that requires 16 defense. I don't think I have that much yet. Oh, yeah, I only have 8 defense. Oh, that's annoying, dude. Well, I'm just going to save this stuff for later, I guess. Also, this empty antique atlas. This is like a map, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, there we go. We have it on the top right corner. It's pretty cool. It's pretty much like a mini map. Except it doesn't really show that much, I guess. You can just see, like, trees and water. Still pretty cool, though. On day 47, I got a lot of wood. I also completely redid our whole base area. I was sorting out a bunch of chests just so we can stay a bit more organized. And also killed a bunch of chickens. We needed some feathers. Alright, it's day 48, and a lot has changed in our home base. Right here, this chest is the chest where we have all of our good items. And down here, we got a bunch of random spam, some junk, some food, stuff we don't really need. Now over here are good items that I think they're good at least. I just, I'm just not sure what they do. Like, I'm kind of clueless on these things. Over here we got our wood chest, and right underneath it we got our chest with other building blocks, like stone and dirt and all that. That's pretty much it. Ooh, silver ingot. Let me, let me, we'll put that back real quick. Oh, I forgot about our bottle of enchanting. We should use this real quick. Let's try to get our defense up to level 16. I need to get this thing to level 16 so we can wear our diamond armor and also put on that, like, Aussie chest plate liner thing. So we can actually control our heat and cooling, because right now I'm just- I'm always burning constantly and it's annoying. Oh, we can only get to level 14, that's unfortunate. Looks like I'm gonna have to grind a bit more before I can get to level 16 defense. Oh, and I also made a bunch of arrows too. On day 49, I realized that I had a summoning staff. Like, I forgot that I had this thing. This thing is so useful. Yeah, so I went over and fought this joust right here, and it was not even hard at all, dude. My summoning people were so good. They just shot a huge fireball and just killed him instantly. Like, that was so sick. I love these guys, and they'll follow me, like, wherever I go. So yeah, fighting mobs are so easy now. Well, these cactuses look kind of weird. These do not look right at all. By the end of the day, my defense was finally level 16, which means we could wear this diamond armor. This diamond armor did not seem to have any modifiers. I'm not sure if there's modifiers on everything. I'm gonna combine this thing with the Aussie chest weight liner, and now we got temp adjust lining mild. Now if I put this on, hopefully I don't get super hot or super cold anymore, because that was super annoying back then. This is gonna be so helpful. Well guys, today marks day 50 on Hardcore RL Craft. I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video so far. I'm gonna end it off here for today's video because it's been getting pretty long and I know you guys want to see this video soon. I don't want to leave you guys hanging for like a month or so because that was pretty bad when I did it last time. Plus I need some more help from you guys. You guys can leave suggestions down in the comments below on what I should do, how I should progress and get better weapons just so I can fight a dragon. We're pretty much set though, I've got access to the nether, I'm not sure how important that is. I also have the coordinates of like one or two dragons, so then I can fight those whenever I'm ready. And our levels are pretty high, I, I think they're alright at least. Also this thing, I'm not really sure how this thing works, so like, oh I just closed it. If you guys know how this stuff works, also let me know. I feel like this is actually pretty good, I'm just missing out on it, so that's not a good thing. Okay wait, hold on, so I have six levels and it says this thing costs five? Increase, what happens? Okay, now do I sprint faster? Okay, maybe I do. I can't really tell. But I, I don't know how... Wait, what? And it just disappeared. Okay, I'm not sure how this stuff works, man. Y'all are gonna have to let me know in the comments. But yeah, I'm gonna end it off here for today. Part 2 is coming out very soon. Also, 300 days. Also soon. I know you guys also want to see some normal Minecraft hardcore. Because that has been a very popular series on my channel. Don't worry, everything is coming. I am not stopping the hardcore world. But yeah, guys, I think I'm just gonna leave it here for now. I want to hear your guys' feedback. Do you guys think I should continue playing RL Craft? Let me know down in the comments below. This video has been super fun to make. Because it's just been something fresh. I've been playing Minecraft hardcore for so long now on my channel. It's just, it's just getting repetitive so yeah guys i think that is gonna wrap it up for today's video we are looking pretty strapped out and cool i hope all of you guys have an amazing rest of your day and i will see you guys next time peace out